Hello everybody. Today I'd like to demonstrate my MicroCam cassette interface. This is a cassette interface that I created for my MicroCam, MicroCam single board computer. The MicroCam single board computer is from Real Computers and it's a replica of the original Chem 1 computer which was released in the late 70s. The MicroCam is a great little single board computer but it didn't have, it doesn't have the cassette interface included with it and I've waited quite a while for Brill Computers to come out with the cassette interface and finally I decided to build my own. Um, so this is the board here, this is the cassette interface, it hooks into the MicroCam's expansion port right here. Um, the as you can see, I have the audio input and output connected to my Tandy CCR82 cassette recorder, and I'm going to be using this to uh, play back data today into the MicroCam. Um, the original cassette interface for the MicroCam uses uh, binary phase shift keying, so it has basically two frequencies that it uses. The original design used a PLL, and the output of that PLL was fed into a comparator and that's how the original design worked. Well, one of the problems when I was trying to build this cassette interface was that the PLL used back in the day, I, I had a hard time finding it, and even if I did find it, the original cassette interface was designed to work at 12 volts, and I don't have access to 12 volts here. This entire computer runs at 5 volts. So I got to thinking about how I could solve that problem, and I came up with the idea of replacing the original PLL and the comparator in the original design with basically a PIC. So what you what we have here is a single PIC 16 IC and it serves the purpose of the original PLL and comparator. And the nice thing about that design is it's pretty elegant. It allows me to build the entire cassette interface with just one IC and then a handful of passives. So you can see here this is the uh, the PIC 16F. Um, again some resistors capacitors. You have an LED here which gives indication of the uh, current status of the system. The LED is off if it's not receiving anything. It's red if it's receiving a signal but it doesn't know how to process the signal. In other words, the frequency components of the signal aren't what it expects. And then it's green if the frequency components are what it expects and it's able to intelligently, well, if it's able to interpret the signal. Um, audio input here, audio output. There's a jumper to select between mic out and line out. This is the PIC programming interface and these are just some debug signals that you can use. This is a switch that uh, allows you to play back pre-recorded data. I'll talk to, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's get to demonstrating this. Um, let's see, the first thing I want to do is uh, play back an original or a program in the original format. So I have everything all set up here. I have a little clock program that I wrote recorded on this tape. It's recorded at the original speed, so let's let's see, let's punch in 1873. That's the load routine, so let's go on the cam. Let's push play here. Unpause it. Now, we're getting some noise here, so the LED's flashing red. Now, as soon as it starts recognizing the tape stream, the LED locks onto green. And so it's uh, it's interpreting the data coming from the cassette. Now, the greener this LED, the better the input stream. So if if you're playing this back and it's kind of greenish, reddish, okay, that's not too good. Maybe you need to adjust the volume or something on your recorder, but this is solid green here, so we're golden. Now, okay, it's done. You see the result code of zero, which means success. So we loaded it in. It took a while, even though the original program, the program here is only 150 bytes. Uh, the original tape protocol is very slow. Uh, so... I think it was Jim Butterfield came up with HyperTape, which basically speeds up the original um, cassette format by a factor of two, three, or even six, and that was very popular back in the day. The uh, cassette interface works well even at 6x speed, so I actually have the same clock program recorded at 6x speed. Here, let me find it. It's a little later on the tape. It's about at 25. Okay. I'll show you loading it in at 6x speed, and you'll actually be able to hear a difference, too. So, let's see, let's go back to 1873. Load it. Okay, this will be much faster. 
so it hasn't locked yet. There we go. All done. And so as you can see, it, it worked great. Um, the clock program works a lot like the original clock program. So if you, whoops, if you go into 60 and put in the hour, and then the minute here, and then the second, go to 200, run it. Yeah, right, so we loaded it in just fine. That worked great. Now, so yeah, the set interface works fine at 1x. It works great at 6x. Um, when I was developing this, I had a bunch of extra code space left over on the pick, and I thought it would be neat to utilize that space to allow you to save programs into the pick that you can play back later without a cassette tape. So, for example, programs that you use all the time, like when I'm not using my microchem, I have it running the clock program sitting up on my shelf using it as the clock. Well, every time the power goes off, I have to reload the clock program back into the microchem, which previously involved hooking up a UART cable or a cassette. Well, now I can just load the programs straight from the pick. And you can also you can put subroutines that you use all the time, anything that you want in here. I think I have seven or eight programs recorded in there. So let me load up one of those for you. The program I want to load up is called VU Tape, and it's actually stored as the third program, third pre-recorded program on the PIC. That's ID number two, so I have to put in the right ID, and that's uh, at address 17F9. So we want to load up ID number two. Okay, now let's go to the load address, which is 1873, and hit go. So now the Kim is waiting to receive a program. Now if we push this button here, the pick's going to play back all the pre-recorded programs that it has in its memory. And the light turns green. So as soon as it gets to number two, oh, we've loaded it up. So now we've loaded up VU tape. Uh, let me show you VU tape. That's kind of neat, especially when demonstrating a cassette tape. We run it at address 200. So what VU tape does is it shows you in real time basically the status of the cassette interface. So right here this is the uh, data as it's receiving, and it's trying to synchronize right now. So it's basically showing you the noise that we're receiving on the line here, because I have play pushed on the cassette tape, right? If I, if I push stop, you know, the noise basically stops, and you don't get anything. If I take, um, yeah, if I take the audio plug out, you know, you'll see a lot of noise coming in, right? And so it's trying to find a valid cassette stream. Now once it finds a cassette stream, uh, basically it's waiting for a bunch of synchronization characters. You'll see that here. So let's, let me show you that. Let me go back to the beginning here. This is, um, again, the clock program recorded at speed 1x. Now when it synchronizes, you'll see this, this turns green and you'll see the little synchronization character there, that. That's the synchronization. Now, once it's done synchronizing, you'll see the data start rolling in. And this, this is the data arriving in real time as the Kim is reading it. It's pretty slow because this is at the original 1x speed. Let me show you the difference between 1x speed versus, say, 2x speed synchronizing. 2x speed versus, uh, let's see, 3x speed. And then finally, 6x speed. 6x speed is about the fastest that you can reliably do with a cassette tape. <laughs> Pretty neat. But for the pre recorded data that exists on the PIC, because it's a straight digital interface going from the PIC to the CAN, there's no noise, I was actually able to achieve a 12x speed. So I'll show you what 12x looks like. Ready? And there are about seven programs here, so it'll go by pretty quick. Program 1, sync 2, sync 3, sync 4, 5. So yeah, that's 12x speed. Anyways, there you go. Um, it was a fun project, and I'm really glad I have a cassette interface now. 
uh, when I had the board manufactured due to minimum order quantities, I have a ton of these boards sitting around that I'm not doing anything with. So if you're interested in building and assembling uh, this cassette interface for your microcam, let me know. I'll send you a board and you can have as much fun as I have. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.